I'm going to be showing you the cosine rule, which is what you should use when the sine rule fails you. So this is all in, in the interest of trying to solve triangles and trying to figure out sides or angles. I don't know if you ever heard of this joke right here. You never heard this uh, math joke? Why was 6 afraid of 7? It's supposed to be because 7, 8, 9. So watch this. So why was 6 afraid of 7? Why? Approximately, oops, actually, you know what? Someone spelled this one here wrong. Look at this one. Uh, <laughs> so they said approximately this. I said, why is that? Cause seven, eight, nine. Oh, cause cosine. All right, so if we take this B, we have side B across here. We have side C here. Here we have side A. And like I said, it's we should use cosine rule. I actually just use it as a last resort. I use it when nothing else works. It's not a right angle triangle. Sine rule failed me. There we go. But the key is you need to know two sides. Plus, so let's just say I knew this one and this one, and I need to know then either this or this. But keep in mind, it doesn't have to be just like this. It could be that I know these two, and I want one of these. So don't get too tripped up with which one is A, B, or C. Think more about how the uh, formula works. So we'll see this. Should you obey the law? Let's see if we can come up with this, or at least uh, work with it. So again, I'm going to give you these names right here. So we've got B right here, we've got A over here, and we've got C over here. So the cosine rule, the way it looks in your formula booklet, it's the first uh, iteration of it is when you're trying to actually solve for C here. So here's the idea is that you already know this one. So you know this, you know this. Okay, so we'll have those, we'll have that one. And the idea is you also know this one. And here is what you're looking for. Okay, so I'll say like this right here. Let's say this is what you want in this case, okay? So just the way it's written. But keep in mind, we could always just take all these and sort of rotate them around. So the A's and B's don't matter so much. Um, so let me just show you the equation, the way it sits. It's actually this one right here. So it goes C squared. So that's side C, here's little c here. Equals, it's, so keep in mind, it's whatever side you're looking for to solve. It's equal to the other two sides. Remember I said here you have to know the other two sides? Well, here we go. We can know the other two sides. So it's a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cos of angle c. So these are here are the things that you knew. So keep in mind, though, you're either looking for this or this. Okay, those are the two things you're sort of looking for here. So this right here is the uh, cosine rule, the way it sits. In your formula booklet, it looks like this. Whoops, I should do it maybe in green instead. There we go. So this is in your formula booklet. That's how it looks, okay? But now there's another version because what if you know those two sides, A and B, and you know side C, but you want angle C? So this right here, see, the whole idea here is you're trying to find a side, and you know the other two sides, and you know the angle opposite to it. So what you could do, you could actually try to solve for this by itself. So I'm going to just do a little bit of manipulation to see if we can get to it. Let's see. So I got minus 2ab uh, cos c. Maybe I'll just move all these ones here on the other side. So I'll take the c squared. I'll move the a squared to the left. It becomes a minus a squared. I'll move the b squared to the left. It becomes a minus b squared. That equals minus 2ab cos c. Now I want to uh, divide both sides by minus 2ab. I'll try to do that, right? So I'll divide both sides by, actually, you know, I'll divide both sides by just 2ab for now. So then I'll have c squared minus a squared minus b squared over 2ab. Okay, that will be equal to co, uh, minus cos c. Now I'm going to change the sign now. So I'm going to put this one over here, you could say, uh, or you could, you could see it as I multiply both sides by negative 1. So then I'm going to have this one. I'm going to maybe end up, yeah, I'll just write it down. Then. So it'll be like this. It'll be cos c, which is this one right here, equals, now all these here are going to flip signs. This c squared is going to become minus. This is going to be plus and plus. So to see it's going to be a squared plus b squared minus c squared, all that over 2ab. And this is the other version of it that you get on your formula booklet. So again, you don't have to memorize these. Uh, you just have to know that you can find them. Okay, so again, formula booklet. So although these look complicated, um, well, at least you don't have to memorize them. 
So again, it all depends on what you're looking for. So in this case right here, here is what you're looking for, right? Here you want an angle. So you're trying to find an angle or a side. Then you have this version or this version. So let's try to do a practical example here. So here we have this triangle here, DEF, and we're trying to find out what's length DE. I did this on purpose to show you that it, they don't always look like A's and B's and C's. The important thing is to learn sort of how it works. If you want a side, you need to know the other two sides and the opposite angle to that side, or if you know all three sides, this one right here is the important one here, C. That's the one that has a minus here. Let's just see if we can figure this out. So we have this triangle. We don't know if it's a right angle triangle or not. We're not told. We have to assume it's not. We know two sides and one angle. We want to know the third side. This right here is what we're looking for. We want this. Okay, we want this side DE here, whatever that is. We've got to find that length. So, um, and I would always try to use law of sines first. And if I look at this to do law of sines, remember that's the one that goes like a side over the sine of the angle equals another side over the sine of its angle. To do that, I have to know a side and its opposite angle. And I don't, because this side, I know it, but I don't know that angle. I know this side, I don't know that angle. I know this angle, but I don't know this side. So we're stuck, we have to use law of cosines. And we're going to use the one where we're looking for a side. So we're going to look for this first version right here. So it helps to write it down just to show your teacher, whoever's marking your assignment or your work or your exam, that you know what you're doing. So I'm going to write like this. This way, at least it's clear. But now there's no A's and B's and C's. They're like weird numbers and things. So what helps is to just recognize what we're looking for here. I wanted DE. So I'm going to put DE squared here. Now that equals the other side. It doesn't matter which one is which. So it's the two other sides. So maybe I'll make it, you know, 13 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 13 times 11 times a cosine of what? Well, it's the angle that is opposite to that side. Look at this one right here. That one is related to that one. See that? So which angle is opposite to the DE? Oh, it's the 30 degrees. That's why I knew that. That's how I knew which one to put in. So then I just uh, have to find this and basically say DE equals the square root of this mess here. To do this, I think it's just going to help to have a calculator. So let me open that up, make sure I'm in degree mode. And away I go. Let's just try to do this. I mean, I can do it all at once, I guess. I can say 13 squared plus 11 squared. Those we can do by hand. But then it gets a bit complicated with these numbers. So minus. I'll put in brackets here. I'll say 2 times 13 times 11 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now later on, well, depending on which math class you're in, I can show you how to do that by hand. But for right now, let's just keep it like this. So this here looks pretty good. Let's say enter. Now keep in mind, that's not my answer. That's what DE squared is. So it's like the square root of, you know, 42.3-ish. But it's not exact, right? It's the exact answer is here. So I'm going to take the square root of that answer. And now I have 6.505, so 6.51, let's just say. So 6.51, that'll be the better version here. So DE is approximately equal to 6.51. That's the three significant figures. That's it, we're done. So you've seen how we can use this law of cosines to solve something that's looking really complicated. And I mean, it's a little bit more involved, sure, but hopefully you'll see it's totally doable.